So your discs are made out of two components. There's a, a hard outer part that's really strong like Gore-Tex. And then there's an inner part which is really soft, almost like crab meat. And what happens over time is the disc loses water, it shrivels up a little bit, and it can physically crack. But when it cracks, the hard outer part allows the soft inner part to come out, and that coming out is called a disc herniation. That cracking of the hard outer part is called degenerative disc disease. It can also happen in trauma. You can have a really forceful injury, a car accident or something that rips it. But for most of us, it's just aging. It just, uh, it just tears open. You'll see on an MRI report, that's what they call an annular tear. And when the soft part comes out, that's what they call a herniated disc. A lot of times, um, the tear happens and the soft part does not come out. It just stays in there. And the tear itself, in some cases, is painful and in other cases, is not. The disc is one of the weirdest structures in the human body. It just, it's just a weird structure. It has no blood supply. And the way your body knows what's you and what's not you is based on your blood. Your blood circulates around it and it tells you what's you and what's not you. Well, everything's fine as long as that disc is contained inside the annulus and everything is, has a nice connective tissue member, re membrane around it. But when that annulus tears, your body is now exposed to stuff that it doesn't recognize as being part of itself. And it feels like there's a knife in your back because from your body's point of view, there's a knife in your back. Like there's, there's something there that doesn't belong there. And the inflammation starts and it, it really hurts. You can see that inflammation on MRI and that's the basis of the discogenic pain. You can do a lot to prevent degenerative disc disease. They, um, you, you inherit your discs and they're gonna degenerate at some rate based on uh, mom and dad and, and what you were exposed to and accidents and all of your life's history in the context of your genetics. But you can totally control your muscle. Core strength offloads the disc. So the more core strength you have, the better chance you have of preventing um, degenerative disc disease. The structural member of the disc is held by ligaments, bones, joints, and muscles. And of all those things, you can't really change your ligaments, you can't really change your discs, you can't really change your joints, but you know you have control over your muscles. That's the one thing you can actually build up. And it's just crucial to maintain strong core strength. Most of the time you have an annular tear and nothing happens. You get a little inflammation and your body heals the tear over and nothing goes on. In other cases, and we really don't understand why one would be one way and painless and the other one would become so increasingly painful over time, but in another group, the inflammation just gets going and once the inflammation is established, it begets more and more and more inflammation. And you literally, the tear starts becoming invaded by granulation tissue that's trying to heal it that tissue has nerve fiber endings. So now the disc, which didn't even used to have any ability to feel pain, now does. There's pain fibers growing into the disc. That's why it starts becoming more and more and more and more painful. The main way it resolves by itself is your body heals the original defect. So you have an annular tear and your body heals the tear. You, the disc is no longer in contiguity with the blood, anything that has a blood supply. And so there's never uh, inflammation and there's never pain. Most of the time it heals, it just, the original defect is, is healed over. And then there's the other side, and the other side is five to 10 years later. The, um, the tear, there's been so much inflammation that all the disc material is essentially burned out. It's destroyed by inflammation, and it's, um, on the MRI we'll often talk about it looking like it's almost bone on bone. It's as if you've had a surgical fusion, you had an autofusion. Fusion is your body's natural way of ultimately responding to this problem. Degenerative disc disease, when it requires surgical treatment, which is very rarely, the vast majority of them get better on their own, but very rarely when it requires surgical treatment, the treatment is to remove the entire disc and replace it with a spacer, which will allow your body to knit through. And we encourage that knitting through by putting in a spacer that encourages the bone growth. Surgery for degenerative disc disease where you're replacing the disc, you essentially trade one pain for another. You start out with the pain of the disc and then you trade that. When the surgery's over, there's no disc, so there's no disc pain, but now you have the surgical pain. You have sore muscles from the surgery, you have sore end plates from being scraped off and all of the rest. That pain usually goes on really pretty significantly for about three days, then it drops down and it's present for about a week, and then it goes to almost nothing by three weeks, and after that you're completely recovered.